and Ericsson's shares have risen the most in a month after posting fourth quarter sales that beat analysts' estimates. Revenue for the world's largest wireless network uh, rose by 8% in the period. Demand from mobile broadband was high and looks set to continue with uh, Asia Pacific, the uh, key target for growth. Well, to tell us more, I'm joined now by the best possible authority. It's uh, Ericsson's CEO, Hans Westberg, and he joins me live from Stockholm. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, tell me, how do you see uh, the phone companies uh, spending, developing in your core business networks? Uh, we have seen during 2010, first, of course, uh, slow part of the first part of 2010 and then in the second part we have seen some pickup and you can say it's very much driven by mobile broadband investments uh, across the border. Uh, we anyhow need to say that we, we are sort of divided in 10 regions and in the fourth quarter we were growing year over year in four out of the ten. So we still have regions that are fairly slow but we have a couple of ones that are really strong. Of course North America, parts of the, uh, China, Northeast Asia has been strong in the fourth quarter. Uh, uh, very much from that and uh, as we saw in the report the network division grew with 14 percent in the fourth quarter mm. and then looking at uh, going forward into this year and um, how much of it is going to be about new high-speed networks 4g and how much of it is just going to be about upgrading those existing 3g networks I think that uh, we're going to see both of it and I think that we are a little bit uh, sort of surprised about that 4G is coming earlier, the LTE development is coming earlier in many places. On the, on the, at the same time we see the high speed data networks on 3G is actually being upgraded to higher speeds all the time. So I think we're going to see both of them. We're going to see a further push on the 3G networks that has a lot of capacity still left on the speed point of view to go, grow and then we see 4G coming in uh, quicker in some market so it's going to for in our case we invest in both of them equally much because it's mm -hmm. so important to be part of it now you've got some uh, managed service contracts with power companies as well um, do you think that there's going to be new communications customers uh, and what will they be doing I, I, I agree to that and I think that uh, as this world now develops and we're going to have a mobility and broadband so broad out in the world, so of course telecommunication is going to be part of any industry, uh, our capabilities of running networks will go beyond only running for mobile and fixed operators. We are running for TV channels today and as you say we run for power companies and energy companies. It's the same type of technical skills when it comes to tools, method and processes. So that's that core skill we can replicate in other industries. Now you also said that um, your margins were dented by the initial 3G rollout in India uh, and by modernization contracts. Could you just tell us a little bit more about that and how that managed to dent the margins? I think that as we have seen in our business model the last uh, five, five years or ten years is that when new footprint comes up you build a new technology or you build a new network that's of course when when the, the, the challenge is to get in and, and win that market share. We have been uh, doing well in that area especially on the modernization in Europe where we have seen a lot of modernization on networks and also we maintain our market share on 3G in India. So that will of course initially have, have some, some pressure on the margins but long term that's positive that we continue to gain market share and have a stable platform to continue to deliver uh, improvements both on top and bottom line. Now you did see a growth in the US which had been very strong, easing off just a little bit. What, what's the reason for that? I think that North America, we have established our sales on a totally different level in North America. Uh, we grew more than 100% uh, compared to 2009. It's a couple of reasons. One is the broadband, mobile broadband investment that is happening. Our acquisition of Nortel has been very important as well. And then adding also that we are a big service provider now in, in North America. For example, we're running the Sprint network uh, as a managed services. So we basically have all our products and services and we are supplying to all the major operators in North America. So we, we have established ourselves as a very uh, a strong supplier and number one in North America. Okay, Mr. Westberg, thank you very much indeed for that.